Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to the Marley Bird YouTube channel and part three of this three-part video series for the My First Knit Toe-Up Socks. As you know, this is part of the 2020 Sock Along I am doing with my friend Ron Strong, who has designed the Crochet Toe-Up Socks. Both of these patterns are free and available at marleybird.com and have a full video tutorial set for each section of the pattern. You really can't go wrong. I've put a link to the pattern in the video description box right down there below, and that will take you to the blog post. In that blog post, you will find all the information regarding the sock along, the materials you will need for this pattern, and a link to each section of the pattern and its corresponding video. If you like to have the pattern all in one nice, tidy little place, you could purchase the ad-free PDF, and the link to that is also provided in that blog post. So everything you need to know is all in one place, and all you need to do is click the link in the video description box of this video. And while you're down there, will you go ahead and smash that like button, as my kids say, so that other people know you enjoyed this video. Okay, by this point in the series, you're ready to start the leg of your sock, which is a very simple and easy portion of this sock pattern. We've gotten through all the hard stuff, so let's go ahead and jump in and talk about the leg of the sock and how to work those stitches. At the end of part two, you had finished your sock all the way up to about right there. So for part three, we are going to work on this portion of the sock. And in the sample sock, I've kept this all in stockinette stitch, and I've left about one inch up here of one by one ribbing for the cuff. Keeping those stitches on the leg in stockinette stitch was deliberate on my part. I wanted to make sure you had a section of the sock that you could just knit and have an enjoyable time working rounds and rounds and rounds of stockinette until it was time to make the cuff of your sock, which is really what helps hold the sock up on your leg. The beauty of making toe up socks is that once you've completed the toe, the foot and the heel, you can then use all of your remaining yarn for the leg of the sock. Simply work the leg up until you have enough yarn remaining for about an inch worth of ribbing and then you are done. You have no waste left over, which means you're not gonna have any random scraps of sock yarn just laying around. You're gonna have a pair of socks that used all of the yarn to make them. Pretty convenient, right? Now that we know what we are working on in this video, let's pull in the swatch from part two's video. And this is what we worked on together in part two. We did the entire heel of our sock and we are getting ready to continue on working the leg of our sock. I have my yarn coming off of the needle that's in back there, okay? So those would have been my heel stitches, these are my instep stitches, and if I want to continue on working in stockinette, I will move that back needle to the cord, and I will just knit all of these stitches on the front needle. And this is my needle one, because I still have my marker in place. So I simply just knit these stitches. And if I'm working the leg in stockinette stitch, I will just do round and round and round of knit stitch, rounds of knit stitches. And this is the part in the pattern that if you wanted to transfer over to nine inch circulars, you could do that. If you wanted to use two circulars, you could do that. If you wanted to do magic loop like I'm doing, you could do that. Or heck, if you wanted to transition to double point of needles, you could do that. Now, what I'm doing here is nothing new. It's basically exactly what you did for the foot of your sock. I am just getting my stitches or my needles back into a starting position, moving the needle that is in back, right back there, to the cord, and continue, continuing on in stockinette stitch. Now, I know there are some of you out there who are gonna ask, okay, Marley, I don't wanna do stockinette stitch. I really wanna do a pattern stitch on the leg. How can I do that? 
Well, if you wanna do a pattern stitch that works on the leg, the first thing I'm going to suggest is that instead of starting your pattern stitch directly after you do your heel, work a couple rounds of stockinette just to give yourself a little bit of extra plain Jane fabric beyond your heel. I find that the heel section of my sock is a little bit shorter on the back of my heel than what a um, than what my heel is. So this back section here tends to be just a little bit shorter. And if I start a pattern stitch right down here, it rubs on the back of my shoe. And I hate that. So I will typically do two, three, four rounds of stockinette stitch after my heel, and then I jump into my pattern stitch. That's the first thing I'm going to mention. The second thing I'm gonna mention is before you can add a pattern stitch, you need to count your stitches on your needle once again. Once you have your stitch count, then you can take a look at a stitch dictionary or different stitch patterns online and find a stitch pattern you like that has a multiple that will fit nicely into the number of stitches you have. So for example, if you have 60 stitches, you could do something that has a multiple of two, of three, of six, of 10, of five, um, of 30, uh, <laughs> of 20, you know, so on and so forth. You see where I'm going with this, right? As long as your stitch multiple will fit nicely in the number of stitches you have, you can pretty much choose any stitch pattern you want. You do wanna be careful though, if you're using a pattern that has the fabric get a little bit too wide, like maybe a seed stitch, or if it has the fabric get a little bit too narrow, like maybe a cable. Cables tend to pull in a little bit more, seed stitch tends to get your stitches a little bit wider. Um, if you're doing like a fair aisle, so say you wanna change colors, you need to be careful with your floats because those could make it to where your sock um, leg is a little bit more restricted, so you need to be careful with things like that. But say you wanna just dabble with it here at the beginning. Well, why not just jump into a one by one rib? So after you've done a couple rounds of stockinette, you can just begin working a series of knit ones and purl ones. And if you do a knit one, purl one rib or a one by one rib, you will have a nice ribbed leg on your sock and you don't have to worry about starting or and you don't have to worry about stopping soon enough to add a final cuff to your leg because it's already built in to the leg pattern. So if you wanna change up this very basic sock pattern that we have here with a very basic stitch pattern, why don't you just try a one by one rib up the leg of the sock? It works really well with solid yarn. It works really well with variegated. It works well with striped yarn. It's a good universal stitch pattern that makes it um, really nice to add to the leg of a sock without having to do a lot of extra math to fit in a stitch pattern or having to worry about if the stitch pattern is gonna show up with the color of yarn you use. If you do a one by one rib, make sure you make note of what your last stitch is that you did over here. So mine was a purl. So that way the first stitch you do over here can be the next stitch in the sequence. So it will be a knit. You just don't wanna have like if that was a pearl, I don't want to start with the pearl because then I'll have two pearls side by side. You know what I mean? And as long as you do that, especially here on the first round, you are setting yourself up with this one by one rib pattern. And then on each of the following rounds, you will knit your knits and purl your pearls. So when I get to the end of this round, I really don't have to think too much more about if I'm knitting or purling. I just need to pay attention to the stitch that I'm actually getting ready to work into. And let me show you what I mean. Conveniently, for those of you who are just gonna keep things in stockinette and then eventually go to ribbing, this section works for you too, because this is how you do one by one ribbing, which is the final cuff of your pattern. All right, so here I am. I've done my first round of knit one, purl one. So I'm starting my second round and I can see here this first stitch, see how it's a knit stitch? So I know because I'm doing a ribbing, I'm going to knit that stitch. Slip my marker. I'm looking at a purl, so I know I'm going to purl that stitch. 
I'm looking at a knit, I knit it. I'm looking at a purl, I purl it. So on and so forth. It makes it very easy. One great thing about working a ribbed pattern down the leg of your sock if you don't want to do stockinette, as I mentioned, is you don't have to stop short to do the cuff. The other thing is it just breaks up the monotony of doing stockinette stitch the whole time. For me, I get really bored working stockinette stitch the whole time and so I like to throw in a stitch pattern that's very easy to memorize and a one by one rib is very easy to memorize. It's also really easy for me because I hold my yarn continental, so moving the yarn between my needles when I go from a knit to a purl is really effortless. So I find ribbing patterns very calming and soothing for me to work up. And you just simply knit your knits and purl your purls as you're working all the way around your sock. Pretty easy stuff. Now another thing I do want to mention is that some of you might be asking yourself, Marley, I've seen socks before where the top of the sock actually has a stitch pattern on it. Can we do that with this sock pattern? The answer is yes. Let's take a look at another sock I have here. And granted, this one was made from the top all the way down. And those of you who did my first series of my first socks might notice the construction of this as a heel flap top down sock. But you will notice that there is a ribbed pattern on the leg. And I carried that rib pattern all the way down the top of the sock. Now, even though our sock is toe up, so this is our sock from the toe up, we created the toe by increasing out until we got the number of stitches we needed, right, for the size of our foot. For the cuff down, we had the size of the foot already established, and then we decreased down until we got to few stitches down here at the tip of the toe. So with that in mind, if we created our toe up sock and we come from the toe, increase out until we get the number of stitches we need. If we then decide to make the stitches that are on the top of our foot a stitch pattern, just like this, we could do that, okay? So you could make this top of your foot a stitch pattern just like that. But I do wanna remind you that when your heel is complete, if you do the German short row heel, and it's time to work in the round again, you wanna make sure that when you start using these instep stitches, you're continuing on with the stitch pattern that you established right here on the top of the foot. And then as you get past maybe a couple of rows or rounds here where you keep this in stockinette and this in your stitch pattern, and then you would change these stitches back here in the stitch pattern to meet up with these so that it looks seamless and it goes all the way up. So if you were doing toe up and you wanted a stitch pattern on the top of your foot, you could do that after you've completed the toe. Just make the instep stitches a pattern stitch. Now I do want to caution you when it comes to adding a pattern stitch to the top of your sock is that for me personally, I have found that when I wear socks with a pattern stitch on the instep or on the, on the top of the sock and I wear those in a shoe, they aren't as comfortable as the stockinette is when I wear those in a shoe. So you want to be very careful of what stitch pattern you use on the top of your sock if you plan on wearing them in shoes. So that's um, just a little warning I want to caution you of. But as far as the possibility of adding a stitch pattern on the top of your sock, you absolutely could do that. And I've done that in some other sock patterns of mine, but this was one that I had um, completed that I thought maybe I would show you. And then on this one, you can also see I carried the ribbing down the heel flap of the sock because I thought it looked really cool. But that is something you can do. Another sock to show you since we're on the topic of customizing just ever so slightly is changing the color of the toe and the heel and the cuff. So on this sock here, I made this with worsted weight yarn and I chose the toe to be a solid color. Then I changed colors every two rows using a joglish join all the way up until I got up here for the heel. And if you remember this heel, I did stacking double stitches so that you could see the difference of what they look like compared to the ones that I did the extra center row, like on these here. 
So once I finished my German short row here with the stacking double stitches, I then jumped right back into my two color change striping pattern all the way up the leg, and then I changed color again for the cuff. So this is a very simple way to make your socks a little bit more unique, or maybe you have some sock yarn that isn't quite enough to make it a complete sock, but you have enough to make this portion of the sock and you can grab a contrasting color for these bits of the sock. It's a great way to use up your extra bits, okay? Now the last thing to talk about is the bind off for your sock. We made this sock from the toe all the way up to the cuff and using a regular bind off just is not going to work. It will make it virtually impossible for you to get your foot in your sock without really struggling and trying to pull on it. There's a simple solution to this and it's called a stretchy bind off. Let's pull in our little sample swatch right here. And obviously this is nowhere near to the leg length I would want before I did a stretchy bind off, but I don't wanna take the time to make it longer to show you in the video. So we're going to imagine this is as long as I want the leg of my sock to be, and we're gonna start the stretchy bind off. Now remember, you do wanna have about an inch of one by one ribbing before you do your bind off, if you've kept everything in stockinette stitch. The ribbing really helps keep this sock on your foot, okay? You want to work in pattern. So if I am in a one by one pattern, I knit one stitch, I will remove my marker because I'm gonna be binding off, and then I purl the next stitch. Now, if this was a normal bind off, I would have this back stitch jump up and over that front one, right? Well, with the stretchy bind off, I use my left hand needle, I go into the front leg of both of those stitches on my right hand needle, and now I knit them together. The next stitch is a knit, so I will knit it. Take my left hand needle, put it in the front leg of those two stitches, and knit them together. The next stitch is a purl, so I will purl it. Left hand needle in the front leg of those two stitches and knit them together. Next stitch is a knit, so I would knit it. Front leg and knit them. Next stitch is a purl, I purl them. Front leg, knit them together, so on and so forth. You'll notice that these bind off stitches, I want you to see this, see how much stretch they have? I mean, that is so vital to fitting this sock on your actual foot. Let me bring in this one and let me bring in this one. You can see here, I have a nice stretchy bind off there, making it so that this sock can actually fit on my foot. And the same thing goes for this one. I have a stretchy bind off there, so I can actually fit this on my foot. And the stretchy bind off is super easy. There are other bind offs out there that will give you some stretch, like the sewn bind off, made famous by Elizabeth Zimmerman. But I find this particular bind off to be super sufficient, very easy to remember, and very useful. I use it quite often when I'm working on shawls or I'm working on a sweater pattern where I need to make sure there's enough stretch in the stitch pattern for me to either fit my big old head through the neck or fit my foot into a sock. So now you can add the stretchy bind off to your knitter's toolbox. And that's everything you need to know to create your first pair of knit toe up socks. I really hope you have enjoyed this video series. I know that I've had a great time teaching you everything I know about toe up socks using Judy's Magic Cast On, the German Shirt Row Heel, and the Stretchy Bind Off, all of which are tools you can now use on future projects. So we have just become better knitters and crocheters if you're following along with the crochet toe up sock as well. As you work on these socks, make sure you share with me on social media. Use hashtag MarleyBird so I can see your works in progress and smash your like button. If you get a chance, please leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite part of this video series was. I would love to know that. Or if you have a suggestion for future videos, let me know that as well. I'll do my best to get you the videos you want. That's it for me, everybody. Until next time, I'm Marley Bird, and this is the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.
Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there, or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye guys.